Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to a Friday episode of Ted's Booze Cellar with me, your most gracious host, Ted. It is currently 42 past 5 on the 19th of February 2021. I hope I'm finding you all in a good state of affairs and if I'm not, then I hope things improve for you very, very promptly. Uh, welcome to Ted's Booze Cellar, the premier alcohol review show here on YouTube. And remember, like always, drink responsibly and know your limits. But, anyway, today we're going to be taking a look at another one of the beers from the Beer 52 gift box that was gifted to me by my good friend Finley for my birthday as a late birthday present. Now, the theme of this particular box of beers from Beer 52 was Melbourne, the city on Australia. So, the beers in this box are all Australian beer boxes, or they're all beers from Australian breweries, I should say. And today we're going to be taking a look at Dank and Bitter uh, which is an IPA from Boat Rocker Brewers and Distillers. Now, it is an IPA, 6.1% ABV, so it's got a bit of kick to it. Uh, it says on the back, remember the old good old days before smartphones and even smarter people. Oh, God. Um, when IPAs were bright, dank and bitter. Well, this is our little homage to those brews, loaded with Simcoe, Senentiel, and Citra. I do like Citra hops, so that is a good start already. That's very good omen. Um, I quite like the design of the can, actually. It has that sort of like craft feel to it, where you've got like the label just plastered around a standard chrome can. Um, so yeah, I do like it, and the design of the label is very nice. Simple colouring and uh, good contrast of colours. I like the mixture of black, green, and white. That does look very striking. So yeah, give that a solid 10 out of 10. Simple, but it gets to the point. Dank, it's bitter, and it's an IPA. That's all you need to know. So, let's give it a sniff and see what our first impressions are like. So... <clears throat> Get the uh, nostrils already. Okay, so it's got a bit of that Simcoe gluey after smell, um, a bit of the um, mango y um, smell as well that you usually get with a lot of IPAs, so I'm really getting a good first impression. Yeah, just sort of getting a bit of like a gluky, sort of icy, sort of mango smell, which is in a, it does smell quite nice. It's very like mild and understated in a sort of way, but um, so yeah, it doesn't like overstay its welcome. So yeah, I'll give the smell a good. Um, oh, oh, just spilled a bit on my trousers, but uh, yeah, I'll give the smell a good. Um, I think I'll give it a nine out of ten. There's just a little bit of pizzazz there missing. Um, I'm not sure if the gluey sort of the after smell really mixes all too well with the mangoey smell, but generally it smells nice. So yeah, I'll give the smell a 9 out of 10. But before we drink this sucker, we'll just have ourselves a quick palate cleanse with water to see what it's like. I sometimes do forget to do this, but I always think it's a good idea to do so when you're reviewing something like alcohol, so you can give it an objective standpoint from with which you can review it from. So yeah. And then on to the most important part of the video, which is to see what this tastes like. So, ooh, bottoms up. Mm. Okay, so there's a bit of this like icy mango-y taste through line. It's undercut by this interesting, um, very smooth and mild sort of bitterness underneath. What is it's in, quite interesting because how I describe it is it's got the main body of the flavour throughout is kind of like that of a simple everyday like mangoey IPA. Then the undertone throughout, um, it's interesting. It's kind of like this bitterness, but not like the kind of bitterness you'd find in an IPA, but like the one you'd find in a bitter. And then at the finish, the mangoiness like sort of uh, spirals off a little bit, and then you get the majority of like the taste in the finish at the end of the sip is more like the bitterness from a bitter. So it's got an interesting mixture of like flavors from I'd say both a simple everyday mango -y I IPA with like that sort of citra sort of like tang to it, and then a sort of a being mixed with the sort of like the more bitter aspects of a bitter um so it's got an interesting mix of flavors um and what's good about this is that like 
I do, I do get the sort of complaint from some people sometimes that like some bitters are like a little bit too watery, and I understand that personally. I don't mind it so much, but um, because I think that kind of texture complements the flavour of a bitter quite well. But I think they've the it, this mostly has the texture of an IPA, like a really sort of fruity, mangoey one, um, and I think that complements the sort of like the very tiny, minute sort of bitterness here really well. So, ooh, pardon me. So yeah, I think this is good. It can it combines what I think are two very simple beer concepts, that being sort of mild bitterness and mild fruitiness, together really well. My main criticism is that I think the texture is a bit muddled. Um, the, the, the sort of like the body of the texture is nice enough. It's got this slightly juiciness to it, and it's got a little bit of a wet finish that's really nice. But like the how it feels in your mouth is weird. It's like a little bit fizzy and it gets a bit muddled towards the end and that kind of sort of does sort of mess up and not completely spoil but does mu muddy up the flavor a little bit which i'm not a big fan of i like if i know the flavors in this are quite stark and contrasting against each other but i'd rather they be just left as they are to sort of contrast against each other and i feel the texture does spoil that a little bit not too much and not enough to spoil it but just a little bit to be distracting um and then there's also the fact that I wish the mangoey flavour was a bit more prominent in the finish. But that being said, this is still a good IPA and it does combine flavours that I think, strangely enough, while you wouldn't think they would work together initially, they do actually work together in the finished product. So I'll give this an 8.25 out of 10. There's a few things I would say that it could do with um, refining just to get into that elite level category beer, but generally speaking, this is a really well brewed IPA. It's very competently made. I like the design of the can. The smell is nice and the flavour is very overall competent and it is a very enjoyable drinking experience. So take that as you will. And I would actually recommend this for not just IPA drinkers, but most beer drinkers in general, because it... It's got a more prominent and sort of like fuller flavour than like say uh, Open Gate Brewery sort of um, Citra IPA, but it's still an interesting one to maybe start on for IPAs in general because its flavour I think is palatable enough to that point. So yeah, 8.25 out of 10. I think that's a very solid beer and I would recommend it. But to any of you who enjoyed this video, leave a like, share and subscribe. If you have any suggestions for future episodes of Ted's Boo Cellar, let me know in the comment section down below. And if you want to check out anything else I do online, I'll leave the links to all that in the video description down below. But until next time, have fun, stay safe, wash your hands, take a mask with you to the shops, drink responsibly, know your limits, and I'll see you guys at the bar next time on Ted's Boo Cellar. Bye-bye for now.